Mm. You know what, buddy? What? You are my idol. You're my Canadian hero. You well, always if, have been. If that's the case, you're my American idol. Well, you're my Canadian hero. There's no question about it, my friend. <laughs> I'm Daryl Cronzi, and really we are doing something entirely different today. I'm fishing with my good buddy, Dan Gapen, uh, probably the best known river fisherman anywhere in North America. I'm supposed to. A legend in your own mind or my mind? In, in your mind right now. <laughs> but anyways, we're up north of Ignace, Ontario. Ignace, Ontario, in the black spruce forest, black water, black trees, use black bait. What are we gonna catch? Walleye like this? Walleyes like that with black bass. And some big pike. And some big pike, hopefully. Stay with us because this is gonna be quite a show. I'm going fishing all the time and my baby's going fishing too. Bet your life that your sweet wife can catch more fish than you. And a fish will bite if you got the right bait. Now here's a little something that I'd like to relate with my pole. And my line, I'm going fishing. Yes, I'm going fishing. My baby's going fishing too. Going fishing with Daryl Cronzy is brought to you in part by Yamaha, Abu Garcia, Montana's Cookhouse, and Berkeley. Closed captioning for Going Fishing is brought to you by Rapala, the makers of Canada's favorite fillet knives. Far up in the northwest corner of the province of Ontario, at the junction of the Trans-Canada Highway and Highway 599, is the town of Ignace. Here's a community that's supported by forestry and tourism. The town is surrounded by spectacular bush country, a region that is crisscrossed with flowing rivers and a land of thousands of fish-filled lakes. Ignace is also the home base of Ignace Outpost Limited. On this trip, Cronzi has accepted an invitation from proprietors Brad and Karen Greaves to spend a few days enjoying the bounty of Mediunga Lake. Here, limits of walleye and northern pike can be caught right off the dock in front of the cottage. It's a lake that's just made for those who never get tired of catching fish. It's also a lake where Cronzi gets to spend some quality time with an old friend, fishing buddy, author, fishing tackle inventor, and outdoorsman, Dan Gapen. Stay with us as the boys enjoy the treasures of a lake called Midionga. Dan, over the years, right, how many seminars have you given? Way over a thousand, I'm sure. Probably Guess be thousands. Thousands? Yeah. And this is our first walleye, Dan. Look at this. I just I just got bit off from a, with a pipe. And instead of using tying my my bait right to my line, I'm going to use a little piece of my secret weapon. Here. This is not a bad walleye, Dan. Well, that's because we're right here at the drop. You know what? And that's what you said. Get to the drop, right? Yeah. This is, actually, they call it a lift or a drop. You know, every every entering river has it. Why? Why? Yeah. Why? Because the current has has worn a channel, uh -huh. and when it hits the slower water. It doesn't dig it out anymore, and you have a drop, a, a rock drop. Oh, Dan, look what I got. Big pike. A big, and I'm talking a good pike. Now, so what they've got is a wall back here, right? Like no, the they've got come a drop. The, it, okay, it, but it's the a wall it, coming this way, yeah. but a drop going that way, yeah. And these big fish just get in here and lie. And you know what I got, Dan? Yep. I got a pike with my walleye in his mouth. Where do you see this guy? Look at this. Dan, look Anybody at this pike. Anybody got a net? Hey, look at this pike, Dan. He's got my walleye right wrapped in his mouth. Look at this. I know. Look at this. And he's got my walleye there. And he's not going to let that walleye go. Has anybody got a net? You know, if we had a net, if, uh, I if haven't my got guide the pike hooked. put a net in the boat. <laughs> I haven't got the pike hooked. I got the wall. Oh, look. Oh, he's still there, Dan. Look, he's still got it. Gapen, did you see that pike? I saw that pike. You know what? That thing was 40 inches long. Yeah, see how, look at how And I don't troll with a walleye. Look at this walleye. Now they love walleye. They pike eat walleye. Like, this walleye is beat up, right? And look at the That's scratches right on him. Yeah. Might as well keep him for lunch because he's going to die anyways. Die? He's dead. I know. That pike squashed him. I don't want to eat him after the pike had him. 
Oh, I will. Will you? You yeah. can still eat those things. What had happened? And I said to Dan, hey, I got a nice walleye here. And the next thing, poof, almost took me out of the boat. That's right. That fish was over 40 inches. It was at 40 to 41 inches, I would say. Probably a 19-pound fish. How often do you get walleye and all of a sudden the, the pike will come in and smack you them like You know what? That? Over the years in fishing up in this country, I've had it happen probably four dozen times. There's one other thing, Dan. I don't know whether it's legal for me to have a walleye on, right? And the pike comes along and grabs it. Can I keep the pike? Well, I don't see why it wouldn't be, but because it, it's a natural phenomenon, but maybe the... The, the upper echelon biologist will tell you it's not. I don't know. And now our walleye fishing may be a little tough here until these pike get out of here or until we catch them. I'd like to catch that big one. That was a dandy yeah, fish. I know how to do it. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Now listen, I've got rubber on, or I've got plastic on, and you've got, uh, what is that, steel? That's a lead. Lead? That's what they call in Europe a pilker. So you were vertical jigging right under the boat? Right under the boat. Well, you were trying to recover from that big pike. <laughs> trying to recover. I call that a twitch. So, Dan, what is that twitcher. actually? Now, now, that type of spoon, right? Yeah. A lot of people will see it, and all you're doing is casting out, and you bop it along the bottom, bringing it back to you. Yeah. But just, when you got it underneath, you're just... Just bouncing it twitch. off bottom. And I think everybody out there has to understand, and this is why I like the super lines. You've got mono on, but I've got one of these... Twist it, braid it, whatever you want to call it. They're yeah, super they're lines. Good for vertical jigging. Vertical. You know why? So when you're fishing, Dan, you always want to keep that line tight. Yeah, you got to keep the tension on on your bait, and when you with that fire line, you can set the hook better in deeper water. Yeah, there's no stretch. There's no stretch to it, and that's what uh, disadvantage to monofilament. Let me ask you something. You've been in the fishing business for 50 years. Yeah, at least more than that, 60. We, we've seen changes from one end of the industry to the other, right? But I don't think there's been more changes than in rods. Like we're running graphite rods now. Yeah. And you can feel that. Look at, look, you can feel that touch. The minute that that fish touches that bait, you feel it. And with, with that type of line, you instantly can set the hook in them. Like, and I hate using this word, but in the old days, right? Let's be honest. We ran fiberglass rods. Yeah. And when you ran fiberglass rods, you wouldn't feel half the bites. No, that's true. You know? There's no sensitivity to them. Remember the good old days out here? Oh, big changes. Big changes. I mean, uh, we used to get 30, you know, 30 pound uh, salmon and uh, during the spectacular. Now, now, now you get 21, 22. You know, you asked me a question the other day, and, and you said, why the changes all of a sudden, right? Right. And I'm going to be up front on this issue, okay? In Canada, from one end of the, you know, from the Atlantic to the Pacific, we've got some phenomenal, and I mean some phenomenal biologists out there. Yeah. They, and, I, and I've met hundreds of great biologists, but it's just like a, a bushel of apples. If you get one bad apple, the whole bushel is, you know, shot. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or at least everything that these biologists have tried to accomplish, one guy can kill it. And, and I've seen that, you know, pretty well in, in almost every province or every territory. Uh, you've got a lot of guys that are really working hard, yeah. but one bad guy will, will kill it for you. And uh, it's, it's tough to, you know, it's tough to beat. Yeah. Uh, you, you look what's happening in, in Owen Sound. We had a great fishery. We don't have a fishery anymore. We had a, a great fishery down on, on Lake Ontario. We don't have that great fishery anymore, no matter what anybody says. And, and we've got problems like that in every province. And all I'm saying is, I think that we have to get these biologists together mm -hmm. and get them thinking fishing, you know, and, and put their priorities in the right order. And that means, listen, the Ministry of Natural Resources works for us. We don't work for them. We pay their salaries. Their job is to make sure that there's going to be fish on the end of our fishing lines. As long as they uh, get their agenda from the people that are paying them. Because I honestly think a lot of times we know more than the the ministry people because we're out on the water all the time. Going fishing returns with more walleye action on Lake Medianga. David, yeah. what are you doing up there? You're playing around with that I got, line? I got bit off again. So. What do you call that stuff you're putting on there? That's a soft monel. It's only 10 pounds, but it keeps the pike from biting me off, and I didn't have it before. Dan, I'll tell you what we should tell people. Your monel, it's almost, well, it's wire, right? But what it's type wire. of wire? 
Like what is monel? Monel is a wire. It's a soft, soft wire? Very soft wire. You can tie knots in it just like you do a... I got another pike! Oh! <laughs> another pike. Yeah, I still got the walleye, but this pike came up. You know what? This is crazy. This is the second time that we've been bringing walleye up and a pike comes up and hits it. Now again, tell me exactly what Monel is. Monel is a soft, pliable wire. This is only 10 pounds, but the pike can't cut it with their teeth like they can monofilament or even, even some of the hard braid lines. Yeah. They won't cut this, and this is why I'm putting it on. And it's real supple. You can jig with it and doesn't interfere with the action of your jig. Now this could be a real tip for anybody out there because I saw Dan yesterday working this fine wire. Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen that in, honest to God, Dan, from where I sit from oh, 10 years, right? I can roll it back on itself and make a loop and it, you know, that I tie it to the line and then loop it same place down here and just spin it and, and tie it to the jig. That walleye, Dan. Got hit by got another hit pike. Got hit right at the top on the surface. Now, I don't know whether we're gonna get this on camera, but what was it, two minutes ago, three minutes ago? Oh, about five minutes ago, yeah. Five, oh, you gotta disagree with me? No, a little bit, once in a while. Five minutes ago, I brought a walleye in about three quarters that size and I had a 40 inch pike rabbit. Mm -hmm. And it almost knocked me out of the boot. I never did get the fish, though. He doesn't have good balance, folks. <laughs> Gabe, and what you got that great, big, monstrous lure on there for? Well, you've been, you've been enticing all the pike in here, <laughs> so I'm going to see if I can catch a pike on a, a walleye looking pike. Ah, you, I look what I got here, Dan. Ah, watch it. That's pike, my pike. <laughs> as fast as I catch a walleye, I get a pike nailing it. Dan, I'll tell you what, this is neat. I'm gonna let this guy go before another pike nails him. But what we did was we said, we'll have shore lunch, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll go out and fish. And we decided we were gonna come back out and fish for, oh, maybe an hour before it gets dark. The very, give me that gulp back, give me that gulp back. The very first walleye I caught, a pike around 40, 45 inches nailed it sideways. And we had it on for 10 minutes. Right? Couldn't catch it. Yeah, you're right. The next walleye I caught, we have another pike hit it. So Dan says, I'm gonna take off my jigs. And what do you call that thing? Uh, it's a Polish plug. It's a Polish plug. And that made is- Made in Poland. It's made in Poland, and we're saying a Polish plug because we're not gonna go with trademark names. But Dan brings these plugs in, and he says, let's see if we can catch some pike. And now for the Montana's Cookhouse Tip of the Week, Heading to bush country for walleye, small spinners in sizes two and three, three and four inch plastic grubs attached to one eighth to one half ounce jigs, two inch jigging wobblers, and a handful of weight forward spinners should meet all your fishing needs. Is it a walleye, a pike, or a combo? I don't know, but I'll tell you what, I'm worried that if I get another walleye, I'm gonna get a pike. Oh, uh, don't tell me. You know what may have happened? I may have another Guess Com what? Combo. I got another pike, combo. I think. I could be wrong, but I think I've got another pike on here. So you got this, let's on see. Your I got another pike on my wallet. Dan. Let's uh, show them how vicious these <laughs> pike are here in this lake. <laughs> What's the name of this Where lake? Where can you go that is seven walleye, right? Where I've had pike hit it seven times. I've never seen him get so excited. <laughs> He's fishing combos. Come on, What bring would him in you here. do? Bring him in I, here. What do you mean, bring him in? I don't have him by the hook. Incher. He's eating my walleye. That's seven times in a row. I know. And what did you say? It's legal for you. Why? Because I'm part Indian. <laughs> I can do anything I want. <laughs> in this country, you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Dan, uh, I can't believe this. This is bring seven that walleye. Fish up. What do you mean, bring the fish up? You tell the fish to come up. Come up, fish. <laughs> I can't believe this. I may have him hooked this time, I don't know. No, you don't. <laughs> what do you mean, how do you know? He's down there 20 feet. How do you know whether I got him hooked or not? I can tell. <laughs> Dan, my Indian instincts. In your Indian instincts, let me tell you something. Have you ever seen anybody catch seven walleye and have seven pike come and grab it? No, you are one of a kind, <laughs> I must admit. <laughs> Look at this, he's got it. Oh, oh you know what's happened one. now? That's a big one. Yeah, now bring him over here. What do you mean, bring him over? He threw that, you know what? No, he, you know what? He threw the walleye. 
No, you got him hooked, legal. Huh, what do you mean, legally? Yeah. Don't tell me legally. When He's I threw that, the listen. Him up. Look at here. Yeah, but I know I can see that. I'm not blind. But let me tell you something. I threw that jig and minnow out there, right? Yeah. And I had a walleye on, and it no, hit it twice. You caught the uh, Oh, so legally. it's legal now? It's legal. It's caught in the edge of the, <laughs> edge of the mouth right there. Look at that. Yeah, it's but let's right be honest. Corner. Now, I don't care. I cast it out five or six times, and five or six times I got a walleye, right? And every time I got a walleye, I got a pike on. Well, and he grabbed if that. He had, if he had, it's hooked You the, saw him grab the pipe. I what are you want the Department about? of Natural Resources to see this. <laughs> it's caught right here in the corner of the mouth. Yeah, but we know. Now, let me hold this fish. Okay. We know. I got him here. Well, I've got to get. Well, I'll get that. I've got to get that hook okay. out with that gulp. I'll you tell you what. The gulp. I'll tell you what. We saw the walleye, right? Grab the lure. I didn't see any walleye. I, come on, that's five <laughs> times in a row, and you know it as well as I know it. I didn't five see Five times any in a row, we saw the walleye, and Dan says, well, you can keep, I don't know whether it's legal, I don't care. I part Indian, I can do what I want. Yeah. Listen to me, buddy. Is that something phenomenal or what? Five times in a row. Yeah, that's phenomenal. Put that poor fish back. Oh, I'll put it back. Put it back. I've never been anywhere in my life where I've caught five walleye and have five pike come up and grab it right in a row. Actually, if you had, if you knew about it, folks, it was six walleyes, he claims. But I said that that fish, he got caught in the corner of the mouth, so there was no walleye. You saw the walleye. What happens oh, was no. the walleye I, was grabbed you, by the pike. Court, no, no, no. The walleye was grabbed by the pike. When you go to court, the I'll testify was grabbed, that the, there was no walleye. I don't care if you're part native or not. This doesn't get, you know, you're not going to get anywhere away on this. Got, this guy's ready to go. The let walleye. Him, let the poor thing go. The walleye was grabbed by the pike. Oh. The, the it, walleye it was grabbed by It spit the walleye out. It got the hook in its mouth, and I caught the pike. Folks, you're looking at a couple of old duffers arguing <laughs> over something they don't know anything about. <laughs> All I'm going to say is I've never been anywhere in Canada with six walleye getting caught by six pike. But I don't need the guy behind me saying, and I'm going, I don't know whether this is legal. Because I'm using walleye for bait almost. Don't worry about it. I've got some Indian in me. We're going to be OK. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I keep saying, buddy, you are my hero. We've had a lot of fun the last three or four days. Oh, we sure have. I'm going to do a real quick tackle talk. This guy is an inventor in the tackle industry. And, and we've been around more years than we want to remember. But Dan, I'm going to call this the bait walker, right? Yeah, that's a bait walker. OK, you invented that. What's it was it the original walking sinker. OK, what's it do? Uh, well, one of the things, it walks bottom, yep. only touches 3% of the seeker. You put your line out behind with your minnow, or in this case, a twister tail, and then this is the line going up to the rod. It's snag-free. Yeah. It's about 85% snag-free on natural rock. And it's inexpensive. I mean, I mean yeah, it's a great not. way, and you save lures. Now, let's discuss something else, and this is one reason why I wanted Dan to sit down with me. I worked at Dominion Foundries, or DeFasco, back, oh a few years ago, more than a few years ago, I'll, I'll be honest, okay, say 30 years, 35 years ago, I worked at Dominion okay. Founders. There was a rumor around, oh, we got the secret walleye lure. And again, I'm not paid by these companies, but what was the secret walleye lure? It was that 7S repellent. Repellent, right? it came in from Finland. All, at that, in those days, all the best lures came from Europe, okay? When the repellent came out, and I don't want to name names with these companies, but a lot of American companies, for the most part, started imitating mm -hmm. the repellent or the Finnish lure, right? 15 years goes by, and it seemed like everything was being made in the Orient, okay? Yeah, everything it actually still is. You know, and it's because it's low price, the, the cost of, the cost of uh, in, in, in labor over there and everything else. But then Dan come along and said, hey, it started in Europe. It went to the United States. It went to the Orient. Why not bring the best stuff back, and we'll go back to, to Europe, right? Yeah. And I can say this. What is that, a Polak lure? Yeah, that's a Polish, that's a Polak lure. That's a Pol <laughs> Polish uh, a minnow. perch. Uh, Polish perch? But because I'm married to a Polak, I can call it the Polak oh, perch. How's that? Why not? But the secret is, all of these lures now are being made back in Europe. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got what's this? That's a that's a needlefish. Uh -huh. Look at the finishes on these. This this is a red and white. You know, red and white is still one of the hot colors. That's what you were Everybody's telling me. Everybody's quit day. using it. Yeah, but red and white is still one of the hot colors. That's how we used we used for years. Nothing but a red and white spoon. So, well, what? look, and, and the finishes are phenomenal. There's no two oh, ways about it. Oh. So more than 50 years ago, 
you made the bait walker, right? That's correct. And you brought, we're seeing this circle go around, you know, yeah, going around. Europe, the United States, the Orient, you're bringing it back. And now you've got the Polak's perch. And I can say Polak because I'm married to a Polak. There you go. But it really is the Polish perch. Let's go and eat. Going Fishing returns with the Napoleon Barbecue's Shore Lunch. Two green logs and a hot fire between them, nice dry timber between them. The green logs support the frying pan. And we're going to use... You like your Crisco? I love it for fish, yeah. How come you put me downwind of the fire? Well, I did that purposely. <laughs> I bet you that grease is hot enough already. Okay, put them in. I can't find... Who filleted? You fillet these fish? I didn't fillet them, you filleted them. No, no, this is not my fillet. Look at that thing. It's all <laughs> bent up like a, a, a dead wiener. Skin down, skin side down. Oh yeah, here's a good one. Look at that, look at that, Daryl. Oh, that's, that's old smoke in the face over there. Look at that, that's already, look how nice and brown that is. Oh, look at there. Looks good, Mr. Gapen. That is real pretty, but I've got to get a prettier person over here. Gapen, get your butt over here. Yeah, don't wait for me. I gotta have some of this fish too. My shore lunch man. Let's... I, yeah, I cooked the shore lunch. <laughs> you get to be the hero. <laughs> I don't know whether you're gonna see all that we did last night, but this guy would never be a United Nations ambassador. You've got me in trouble with every nationality in the world. I'm I'm a I'm a what do you call it? Uh, I'm inbred. You're inbred. You've got now what 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 native band? Ojibwe. And you got some French Canadian in you? French Canadian. Right? Not a lot. <laughs> Just a little English, bit. English, little Scotch, little Pennsylvania Dutch. Now again, Gapen is a legend, and you may have seen and heard some stuff on the show that we usually don't talk about on the show, but when two guys get together like us, we gotta talk two about it. Two old guys. <laughs> Dan and I were talking real quick. They're doing one heck of a job up here in Northwestern Ontario. Yeah, the biologists yeah. are really working good. And again, I've got a lot of friends that are biologists, but some are really screwing things up, especially down the Great Lakes. And what yeah, did you it, say? I said, some biologists need psychologists. You know, there's a great, great number of great biologists out there, but there are some screwballs. Can I try some Wally? You betcha. Never overcook it. But listen, if you get the opportunity, don't pass up the chance to get up to Ignace Outpost, right? Northwestern Ontario, it's phenomenal. Let's go, friend. Go sit down. For more information on today's fishing location and other going fishing destinations, visit www.goingfishingtv.com. Going Fishing with Daryl Cronzi has been brought to you in part by Yamaha, Abu Garcia, Montana's Cookhouse, and Berkeley. Going fishing. Going fishing would like to thank going the following fishing. fine sponsors. Baby, smiling my way, gonna have a great day with competition. Going fishing.